In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Blender's motion tracking workspace to 3D motion track your video footage and then solve a 3D camera so you can place 3D objects in your scene. This is just a basic tutorial on motion tracking. There's a lot more to cover, but this will get you started with motion tracking in Blender. First, click the plus button to add a new workspace. We're going to add a VFX motion tracking workspace. Once we're in this new workspace, we'll click open. Navigate to where your footage is and select your footage and click open clip. Once you have your footage in Blender, there's a few things we need to set up to have a better motion track. First, click on the camera or the render icon, and then at the bottom, click on color management. Then change view transform from filmic to standard. This fixes the colors in your footage. Next, we need to go ahead and set the frame rate to be the same. So click on the printer or the output icon, and then we can change our frame rate to the same frame rate as our footage. You can see the frame rate right here. Next, you'll notice that we have frame one to 124, but our scene is to 240. We can set those to be the same over on the left-hand side of the screen by clicking set scene frames. Now our scene is the same length as our clip. Next, we need to prefetch our clip. What this does is load the clip into memory so Blender can work better with its motion tracking and playback. You'll see this purple bar here that indicates that the footage is prefetched. Then we can start to set up our tracking. So rather than be on footage, we can click track. Then on the left hand side, we can start to set our pattern size and search size. We need to use tracking markers. To set a tracking marker, you press Control or Command plus left mouse button. As you can see here in the middle of the screen, the default motion trackers in Blender are very small. So I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to make the pattern size a bit bigger, and I'm going to make the search size much larger. So now I'm going to press Control left mouse button or Command left mouse button. Now I have a bit bigger section. But where is the search area? To see the search area, press Alt S or Option S. So now I can see the area that Blender is searching. So Blender will try to match the center square, and then it'll search for it within this square. Now we can tell Blender how to search. We can simply use location, or we can use location and rotation, or location and scale, or location, rotation and scale, or affine or perspective. As you go up the scale here, they become more complicated and allow Blender to manipulate the original pixels in more ways such as skewing and rotating and scaling them to find the proper motion track. Often we'll be using affine or perspective. Then we have match. We can either choose the original keyframe, so those original pixels, or we can choose previous frame. So it just depends on if you're getting a good track or not. Keyframe will try to match the original frame pixels to every subsequent frame. This can be difficult for Blender to motion track. So sometimes previous frame is a better choice. Then we can click normalize. And what this will do is even out any of the light intensity changes that may be present in your clip. Then we need to change the error rate. Under here on the left, under track settings, it says correlation 0.75. This means Blender needs to be 75% sure that the motion track is correct. We can change this to 0.9, and then that forces Blender to be 90% correct. And then finally, before we start tracking, up on the right-hand corner here, we see this lock. If we click this lock, then our motion track won't move all over the screen while we're trying to see what happens. So let's start tracking. What we're looking for are high contrast points. We need some points in the foreground and the background because we need to have parallax happening in the clip. Parallax is when the foreground moves at a different rate than the background because of perspective. So I'm gonna to try to track this little dot right here and then I'll click the track button and track forward. Then you can check your track. As you can see here, it's pretty good but there, there's some jumping. So we're gonna look for some more tracks. Over on the right hand side, this track should stay dead center. It really shouldn't move around at all. 
So now let's look for a track in the background. Probably something on this building will work really well. So I'm going to look for this area or perhaps this unique area here. And then I can track forwards. So then I can check my track. And it worked really well until the end. So here I have, looking right here, I have a good track. So I can go to about this far, and then that pole gets in the way. So before that pole happens, I can still have a good track, but then I don't want this bad information. So you see this icon with an X? I can click that, and it deletes all the information afterwards. So now I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I'm gonna look for another track on this building. So I'm gonna to try to get this one right here, try to track this window. This one also went until the pole was there. What we can do is go farther forward and then retrack that point. So it was basically right there. We wanna make sure we get the same, the same location. And then we can continue tracking. And if you want to join these two tracks together, you can select them. And then right click join tracks. This will now tell Blender that these are the same elements across time. So we can go to the end of the clip. And then we can track backwards. So for example, we have these nice spots on the building up at the top. But we'll track them backwards. I'm going to use that dot right there. And you can fine tune your tracking over on the right hand side here. And then to track backwards, click this button. So this one got hit by the sign. So I'm going to undo that one. And let's see if we can get the window down below. So it got pretty far. What I want to do is go back and make sure that there's no jumping around. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and use the X going that direction. So now I'm gonna zoom out a bit and look for other places to track in the background. So this antenna here is probably a good place to track. So I'm gonna to go to the end of the clip and pick a spot on the antenna. So now I'm gonna track this spot right here and click backwards. So here you can see looking in the right hand screen, it basically stays right where it's supposed to. Let's get another spot on this antenna. This will be good for the parallax. Then we'll get some things from the foreground. And tracking backwards. So then you can check your track. That stays dead center, so that's really good. I think I'll get one more in the background here. Let's try to get these pieces right here, these will be good to track. So we get different speeds. Again, you wanna get things in the middle ground, the foreground, and the background. So there, that's a good track. And then I can go ahead and click this one, and then track forward. Excellent. And then I'll get this piece right here, and track forward. So that stays pretty well. Now let's see if we can get some more objects. Let's see, does this one cross over? So yeah, that one crosses over the background. But this here doesn't. So we can get one more piece on this antenna to have a nice good track of the background. And I'll track backwards. That stays pretty locked. Okay. So now let's get some more things in the foreground. We have all these train track sections that should be able to get a good track. So let's try one of these right here that has high contrast and we'll track forward. And there we go. So now we have a nice track in the, the foreground. And then we can get some tracks on the actual train. Place this at a point that you can tell where it's drifted or not. Then we can come back and check and notice that it stays right in that corner. Then we can get a few more places. Let's get another one in the foreground here. Let's try this part of the train tracks. And we'll put it right on that white dot right there. And track forward. 
So this one shifts a little bit. You see how that moves? So we're going to go ahead and get a different track. So I'm going to delete that track and then try again. So let's try right here because we really don't want it to shift at all. It needs to be locked on to position. So that one's a better track than the other one. So let's get some more on the train. We need a total of eight, but more is always better as long as they're accurate tracks. And since this is such a high contrast image, we're getting really good tracks. So we'll get a few more. That way we can delete some of the bad ones if they don't work out. So that one went off the screen. So I'm going to double check to make sure that it doesn't shift. So it's okay. And then let's look for one more track that goes all the way across the image. So let's try to get this box right here. That sticks pretty well. Okay. And then we could get some of these objects here. This will help finish off the track because these have high contrast and they're at a different distance than the other objects. So I think right there would be a good spot. And we'll track this pole. It looks like it sticks there pretty well. So we can track this one too. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one. Okay, so now we have plenty of tracks. And we're now ready to solve our camera motion. We could continue to get more motion tracks depending on the accuracy we need. Or if we need to know where something is in the scene. Because these motion track pieces will help us know where different things are. In fact, we're going to get one more just so we can actually make the ground. So even though these aren't perfectly flat, they're pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and get a couple of these bolts from the train tracks. And then we can use these to set a ground plane. So you need at least three to set a ground plane. So even though that track doesn't go all the way through the clip, it can be useful for setting where the ground is. Let's go ahead and get this one here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and see if we can solve the camera. You notice in the beginning of the clip, we have a lot of error. So we can tell Blender to ignore this uh, beginning part. So I'm going to click Solve over here on the left. And we have keyframe A to keyframe B. We can pick our own keyframes, meaning that we select where there's the most parallax. So that's going to be in the middle of the clip here where we're really moving to the left. So we could pick from frame 10 to say frame 75. It doesn't mean that Blender's only camera solving for these frames. It just means that's a good indication of where the camera is. If you're unsure of where to pick your frames, you can just click keyframe and then it'll solve it on its own. If you know the focal length of your camera, you can type it in over here under camera. But if you don't know this information, you can have Blender try to figure it out itself. And you can also have it try to figure out the radial distortion. We're not going to talk about distortion in this video, but radial distortion happens in all camera lenses and 3D elements are not distorted. So we need to adjust that to have a very realistic scene. But in the beginning, this is perfectly fine. Focal length is the most important. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve camera motion. And then we want to look up here at the solve error. Ideally, we want to get this below 0.3, but anything below one is going to be pretty good. So we can look to see which ones of our tracks are the most error prone. So if we look up here, this track I just laid down and this track and this one, these top three, these are the most error prone tracks that move around. So we could choose to delete one of those if we wanted. So for example, this top one here, I could delete it. And then I can solve the camera motion again. And it dropped down a little bit more. So I could continue to refine and replace tracks until I have a good camera motion. What I'm going to do is go ahead and move back to the beginning here where I can get the floor. And so since the floor looks like it's a little wonky, I'm actually going to use the side of the train and call it a wall. There we go. 
So these three points form a pretty good wall. So it's it's imagining that this is the wall. And then I can go ahead and set an origin. I'm going to use this one as the origin. Perhaps I'll use this one as the origin. And then I can pick my X and Y axis respect to the origin. So I can set the X axis and it's parallel to the wall of the train there. And then if I know the scale, I can set this too. So if I know how wide these train tracks are, these are probably at least a couple of meters wide. So I can apply the scale to those. And then I set up my tracking seam. So now I have my origin, which is right here. And then I have these objects in my tracking scene. And if I play the playhead, you'll notice that that cube goes by in space, just like it would in 3D. Let's replace the cube by pressing X and delete and replace this ground plane. Then if I orbit around, you'll notice that I have all these points. These are literally representing the tracking points in time. So in order to have anything 3D fit with these points, we need to make sure that our objects line up with them. Otherwise, it'll seem floating in space. So what I'm going to do is press Shift A, and then I'm going to get a monkey. And if I go View, Camera, Active Camera, now I'm looking through the viewport, and the monkey is right there in the middle. I'm going to scale the monkey down. So for example, if we want the monkey to look like it's on top of the train, it's these two points right here. So we need to move the monkey to those points. So we can move it over to that point farther back by pressing G, Y. Then I can press G, Z to bring it up and then rotate around and then G, X and then see where that is. So now the monkey will be pretty close to right above the top of this marker. So this is right above the train. So let's go view, camera, active camera. So you can see the monkey up here at the top. And then that should track pretty well to that section. So now you see how that doesn't look like it's sliding around because the monkey is right there on the train. So then I can go R, R, X, rotate the monkey head a bit more. And so now I have the monkey sitting there and notice how it changes in 3D, just like the camera, we can see more of the ears. We could have, we could put an invisible plane above the train here and drop balls with physics or other types of things once we get our motion track solved. So hopefully this allows you to solve a simple motion track in Blender, and then you can use it to add 3D objects to your scene. Remember that you need movement in the background and the foreground, and you need to make sure your 3D objects are placed where tracking points are actually in the scene. Otherwise, they'll look like they're flying or floating. Happy 3D modeling.